All right, my name is Aaron Rhodes, and you're listening to the Shuttlecock Podcast, we're sponsored by the Vinyl Underground at 7th Heaven, offering new and used vinyl at 76 and Juice in Kansas City, Missouri. This week on the show, we have Leslie and Max from the Natural Man Band. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing great. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so the band has an LP out now on Lumpy Records. It's very exciting because... Um, you guys got started, like, two years ago-ish, is that right? That's, like, two and a half, about two and a half. Mm. We would have played our first shows about two years ago, and I don't remember how much we practiced before then. Yeah. Yeah, I think we got together in, like, wasn't it, like, Halloween of 2016-ish, around then? I don't remember. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No, the band historians here is what... So what you guys are, um, no, but no, I think was, was that, I think one of the earlier shows must have been the, like, was it the world at Focal? Were you guys on that? Or was that just before? Was that a warm body show? We didn't maybe? play that show. That okay. was a warm body show. Our first show was with Judy and the Jerks at Snake Tank. Okay. And then we played the skate park too around the same time. And that was, those are both in spring and Again, I don't really remember mm. when that was. I just remember what it was. It was cold outside at the skate park. Yeah, it was mm. cold. Um, but I guess I kind of like to start with, um, I don't know, when how how old were you guys when you first started just like becoming really interested in music and like ended up playing? I guess you can go individually. Go yeah. first. I started playing saxophone when I was... 11 so in the fifth grade and I played piano before that because I was bad at math and my mom put me in piano lessons because she thought it would make me better at math it didn't but um then I started playing saxophone because I thought it would make me cool um and it did and it's, yeah it's successful <laughs> there you are Eventually. I, yeah but well I thought it would make me cool and then I got to high school and that's not exactly how it worked mm. out at my high school but I studied saxophone in college um and I, my day job, I do not play saxophone at my day job, but uh, my professors and, and teachers always told me, like, no matter what you do, you're always going to be asked to play saxophone mm. in some weird project. And that is exactly what has happened. Yeah. And I feel really lucky. Yeah. So. And you, you found, you found a ska band to play in. A ska? I don't <laughs> no, think we're I'm a ska kidding. band. No, I, was, I was joking. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> <whoa. laughs> Didn't mean to offend. <laughs> Uh, I started playing drums when I was 10 um, and then played in bands in high school and high school band as well and have played music with friends since then pretty regularly. Mm. Oh, yeah, and um, I think I'd definitely seen you play before Natural Man, kind of just maybe a handful of random shows. Like I, I definitely saw Powers and Light at least once. Yeah, I've played in a few projects before that. Mm. Powers and Light with Ian. Um, I was in the band uh, BB Gun, which was sort kind of, of a, like a, a lazy side a, project. Yeah, some sort of lazy side project. Um, I was in the band Sneaky Creeps. I had a band called Toad Tartar with Stephanie and Natural Man. And... Um, that might be it mm-hmm. that I can remember right now. And oh, no, and Rhoda with Dan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you stay busy. Um. Yeah, if you don't play, you get bad. Mm. So I learned, I learned that the hard way. For all, all the, the young uh, musicians out there listening, um, if you don't play, you get bad. So mm-hmm. keep, keep playing. Yeah. Pro tip. Mm-hmm. 15 minutes a day. Yep. Oh, good tip. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how how did uh, the Natural Man Band kind of first convene? Um, it was really Ian's idea. Mm. I think he just had an idea for a sound that he wanted, and he knew that it was going to take more than three or four people to do that. And so he reached out to people. Um, 
and I was already playing with him in Powers and Light, so that was sort of a natural progression. And Adam was, as well, the guitarist and natural man, because he had just started playing keyboard with us. Um, and then so one time we had band practice, and all these other people showed up, and it was a different band. So. <laughs> I'm like, hey, where'd, where'd my band go? What's, what's, what's this it's band? It's fine. Yeah. It's just drums. Another another good uh, pro tip there. It's fine. It's just drums. It's it's all the same. <laughs> it's not different. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's not true. It's, it's not, not true. true. At That's all. not true. I don't feel that no, way. I was, I was going to take your word there. I but don't feel that way. <laughs> thank thank you for clarifying. Um, but yeah, I guess I was kind of curious about because um, the. The band is, like, I was kind of thinking about it today. I hadn't thought about it this way before, but um, I'd been, I'd listened to an interview with some, like, author, I think, recently, and they were just kind of talking about how, like, sci-fi is kind of used, like, can be kind of used, like, in a cool way to, like, just envision a better future that, like, you know, it's, it's important, you know, to at least think of how you want the world to look and I feel like the natural man band kind of has the same quality it's kind of like painting a picture of like kind of a kind of a weirdo utopia I don't know maybe maybe I'm maybe that's a weird uh assertion but uh I guess I was curious about like what kind of conversations you guys have about like the band's direction and like kind of artistic vision if at all I just remember when I like first talked to Ian about the band you said it was like natural man was the last man to survive the apocalypse mm. and we were all mutants and like Ian was the last man standing after like some sort of like I always think of it as like a nuclear like radioactive apocalypse that was caused by climate change mm. and I think <laughs> I, my understanding of a lot of the songs are is kind of like this like nightmarish reality of the world we're li- currently living yeah. in like we're living in a chemical world and like a lot of our it's kind of like an exaggeration and hyperbole of like our worst fears about like the food we're eating and the water we're drinking and like the conversations that are we're having that are being recorded by the FBI, you know, just normal stuff and by Aaron Rhodes. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And yeah, there's the, the song can't trust your city to take care of you. And so, and yeah, it is cool that like it, it it has like kind of this wide vision, but also does focus in on like the hometown too. So I like that about it. And I know you're very like kind of politically minded and involved in, you, know, you work with like Planned Parenthood and yeah, so that's, I think that's a cool like it, I think it does like the band does end up being like a really cool mix of like a lot of people like a lot of the musicians' interests and like ideas and stuff. So. Yeah, maybe like using sort of some post-apocalyptic situation, you can be like maybe it makes it like inadvertently sort of political and a little bit more engaging like Mm -hmm. lyrically and content wise without being like directly opinionated, which I think can be off putting sometimes can come off as kind of preachy or yeah. And I don't think that's any sort of intention, Yeah, but you know, we're not responsible for lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. We probably, we don't write the words. Yeah. Yeah. Is it just mostly Ian or Stephanie or the both of them or, I think a lot of it's Ian. Mm. Um, There's certainly been a lot of lyrics that have been vetoed Mm -hmm. in the past. So it's not like, uh, I I don't know, a singular thing. But And he's also invited plenty of people amongst the band to write lyrics. But Mm -hmm. again, you know, it's not that easy. Yeah, I mean, if I were to write lyrics, they would be much more political than they already are. Mm. So I can't help it. I feel like everything that we're doing and experiencing is political. So, mm. All right, so if if the next if the next album goes full on political lyrically, I think we'll we'll know who to to look at here. <laughs> yeah, unless you get vetoed. So yeah, mm-hmm. Ho- hope that fingers crossed. 
Um, but yeah, I guess I was uh, also kind of wondering like what inspires each of your respective like playing on like all the songs that you guys have and if it's really changed at all since the band started. Yeah, I think it's changed. For the most part, anytime I'm playing drums and like with people, I just try not to do the same thing every time. I don't like, you know, I try to make each song's drumming different than the next one um, until we kind of stop playing that song and then I can kind of do the same idea again. Um, but, um, and a lot of times because, uh, Natural Man was sort of a project of Ian's beforehand. Some of these songs were made up like two years ago and recorded then. So sometimes there's a lot of like, there's already like a idea of how the drums should be. So that makes it a lot easier for me sometimes or more challenging because I might disagree and then kind of have to come up with something better. <laughs> Otherwise, then I'll have to play what was already there unless mm-hmm. it's better. So... Uh-huh. Are, are there any like particular styles of music or like musicians that you kind of look to when you're um, like writing drum parts for the band? Not so much anymore as far as like per, like actual individuals. It's hard to say. Um, I guess I listen to a lot more like electronic music now. So there's some of that in it, like something that's actually sort of danceable um rhythmically but also simple i guess um so now it's like i don't really feel like i listen to actual drummers as much Mm. but there are like drums so 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 you think the end product (laughs) is kind of probably a lot different than what you've kind of contributed to past bands in that respect right Yeah, yeah yeah Yeah. How about how about you? Yeah, Leslie? I think for me, like a lot of the music that my bandmates listen to, it's music I've never heard of before. So I'm like coming from like the last band I played in was like a eight to nine piece funk band. Mm. Dean Monkey. And oh yeah, I played in Dean Monkey. Sorry, oh. Dean Monkey, I forgot yeah, about them the for one? a second. The other one was called Sharp Nine, and they were both Lawrence bands. Mm. Um, and like. Before that, I was just playing, like, in my college jazz band. And I also play in this Christmas Eve band that's, like, 15 people. um, Just comes together once a year. But I always learn, like, all these, like, soul and funk charts for it. So sometimes when I'm writing my parts for Natural Man, I just pull those out and, like, try to kind of synthesize from, like, a Prince horn line if I can fit that something similar into one of our songs. Because that's the music I listen to, like... Sharon Jones and the Dap Kings, that's what I'm listening to. And I think that, like, trying to write horn lines like that kind of gives Natural Man, like, a unique sound instead of just, like, trying to sound like the bands people tell us we sound like. Mm. But you are getting put on to, like, a lot of kind of weird punk and new wave stuff probably, too. Yeah, totally. Um, Yeah, I'm into it. We listen to a lot of weird stuff in the van on tour, Mm. and uh, I liked it. Almost all of it, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> something come to mind there, Max? Is there something no, no, Leslie had no. an adverse I, reaction to? I listen to my headphones more than anybody else. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. yeah, you're kind of zoned out a lot of the time. Yeah, I have to I go into my own stuff. space in the van. Mm-hmm. I'm not f- fun. <laughs> you're, you're just saying how much fun it was piling out of the van on, on the tour, like a... Like a bunch of clowns, but it was, was just it that was, was just like <laughs> you pull up to a gas it's not station, a, not a shared experience. Like in the middle of nowhere, yeah. and I'm just used to piling out of a van with five other adults in it. But then, like no one else in that at that gas station had ever th- seen anything like a bunch of freaks piling out of a van like that before. Yeah. It was really fun. It was this like one of the first like longer tours that this you've been on. This is the first on? tour yeah. I've ever been on. Ooh, first tour. Yes. Okay, and you guys just got back. Uh, around the end of July here, right? When was it like mid July? Yeah, like mid July, two weeks ago. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, uh, how how did the tour go? Like, you did a lot of West Coast states. Mm. Mm-hmm. It was great. I I loved it. 
Um, we had a little bit of van trouble. Shout out to Ross Brown from Shy Boys and Full Bloods. Shout out to Ross. <sighs> Ross let us borrow the van, which just made our whole tour happen at all. Awesome. Um, the van did have a little bit of trouble in Salt Lake, which was concerning. But and Kansas. No, oh, twice. oh, yeah. It overheated twice, which was concerning. The first two days. So, yeah, like our Seattle show, I don't even remember playing at all because the whole time I was playing, I was just thinking about the van. <laughs> not wasted. <laughs> thinking about the van. I guess it's not your first tour unless you have several problems with your van, so. That's what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> Beginner's luck. Um, but, yeah, um, no, and you got, like, I looked at the the routing again when I was getting ready and like you guys played with like a lot of like really sweet bands on the tour there was like shows with Rolex <clears throat> and Gen Pop Electric Chair Lysol Caffeine mm-hmm. were there any like favorite shows that pop out at you? Um, I think my favorite show is probably the second show we played in Portland with the band uh, Locks, uh, Nick Normal, and um, Hot Gum. Hot Gum. Um, all three of those bands are really good. There was a really good turnout, and I think we played really well. That was probably like seven or seven days in before we'd had any breaks, so we were like really tight at that point and uh, the van was really smoothed out at that point Mm -hmm. too um so there was really little stress going on Mm. um gin pop was really good um i'm not i was like never really liked the recordings i'd heard on the internet if i'm being honest um but live like they were really good yeah probably the I think the best band we played with on tour, personally. Yeah, they're all, like, super good players. Yeah, they like, were really those, good. Yeah. Um, but it, their shows were really fun. Mm-hmm. There was good turnouts at all of them. Um, people were excited. Um, so, really, we were really lucky in that regards, I think. Because um, I've been on tours where um, people don't come to your shows, and that sucks. Those are a little less fun. Yeah, Yeah. they can be as much fun sometimes, but, you know. Yeah. Are there any, uh, like, kind of sightseeing or other tour antics that come to mind from this last run? I think now's the time to make a confession about the Missoula show. We weren't late because of the van. We were late because we took a detour to spend time in some hot springs in Idaho. Mm. We got there at like 11.30 p.m., um, which was like <laughs> much later than we said we'd be there. But we got to spend some... Well, we so we go to these hot springs because we're like really hot in the van and just like, oh, let's take a swim. This will be so nice and refreshing. But the thing about hot springs that they don't tell you is that they're hot. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, they do... Have thought. They do tell you that, but... It was it wasn't refreshing, but it was uh, a really cool experience. I do wish that we had gotten to do more sightseeing. Mm. I mean, it's hard to drive through like Montana and like the West Coast and not be able to pull over and take a look around and just be like on the road trying to get to the next show. Yeah. But we saw some beautiful sights out the window. Yeah, we also did accidentally drive up a mountain in California. Um, <sighs> We got a little turned around on our GPS navigation and wound up on this, like, trail road going up a mountain um, that never led to a campground. And we got up really high and realized we had to take the van back down, winding around, like, the edge of this mountain. And that was pretty terrifying for me Mm -hmm. and I think Leslie a little bit as well. No one else was that scared, which kind of helped a little bit. But, it um, kind of just made me mad. It definitely, it definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys not more scared right now? It definitely now? <laughs> triggered my like fear of heights really yeah. hard, way more than I expected. Mm. Um, but it was okay because then we went to the beach, which was like uh, right yeah. there. So that was cool. Yeah, California was definitely beautiful. It was my first time going anywhere past I thirty five, so every single thing I saw was just like, oh wow. Yeah. mountains the desert the beach all of it so that was rewarding yeah a lot of a lot of big stuff to see out there a lot of 
I'm sorry you guys uh, may not get another uh, Montana show. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> the three people that were still there loved us. Yeah. And Ian crowd surfed on them. Nice. <laughs> So we'll be back. Is that a cool venue? What kind of spot it was, was that? It was a house. It yeah. was Shane's house. So. Oh, okay. Nice. Flavor, yeah, I was, was going to ask town. if it was Shane. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, because he, he's maybe the biggest Guy fan that I know of. He's... The what? Guy, guy Fieri. Oh, yeah. Beef Daddy. For sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some might call him. Yeah. Shout out to Shane. Um... But yeah, uh, Leslie, you've been working a lot lately on Bandwagon, which is, I, gu- I guess you should um, give a little introduction to it, like what are, what's, what are like the main goals and everything for the organization? Sure. So Bandwagon is uh, an aspiring Kansas City girls rock camp. So you probably heard of girls rock camps in Lawrence. There's one in Columbia. They're all over the country. Um, and there's a girls rock camp alliance that's an international So they have resources to help you start um, your own camp, which is what we're trying to do here in Kansas City. So it'll be a five-day camp. The sixth day will be a show, and it's for girls and trans youth. So the idea behind it is really just, like, changing the way the scene looks in Kansas City. Um, There's just a lot of white guys playing music, um, and we just want to find a way to support folks who are trying to do music that aren't white guys. And... It's a music camp, but music is really kind of just the medium to, like, empower people. Um, So it's not like a... Like, I went to music camps as a kid at KU and stuff, but it was, like, super intensive, like, rehearsal all day, practicing all the time. And Bandwagon is really about, like, connecting to people and building community, and music is, like, how we do that. So Mm. it's not a camp where a kid needs to be classically trained on guitar or anything they can just show up and we will give them what they need yeah and i know the goal is also kind of to keep it either like free or very affordable yeah and doing all that so. yeah definitely that's a huge part of our goal i don't think we would really be serving the kansas city community if that wasn't part of it because there are music camps in yeah. kansas city but they're not always financially accessible yeah. you, can, you can go to your your school of rock still if you yeah if yeah there's yeah. <laughs> plenty there yeah but um yeah so um you guys have had several like benefit shows already and uh what what's kind of the state of like planning and everything right now and I don't know are there any like kind of solid like are you hoping to have it like running next summer or yeah Yeah, so we would like to have the camp in I think June of 2020 Mm -hmm. Um, we have a show Friday night to benefit at Woodyard Barbecue. Um, we're going to probably have another benefit in September. And really the goal is just raising money so that we can, the biggest expense will probably be having a space to host the camp. Mm. Um, but we're still, we're still in need of volunteers, especially we'll need volunteers the week of camp because we'll need band coaches and guitar and bass and keyboard and vocal instructors. Um, we need help collect like getting gear like we we need gear donations um so we're still we're still putting a lot of it together Mm. like it's still very much like grassroots just like we have meetings once a week where we figure everything out but right now we're our biggest goal is just raising the money so that we can have the space Mm. and has a like local reaction been pretty cool so far like how, how have the the shows gone for it um, it's been great. Um, I, I you, was, guys, you guys played one of them? Yeah, we played the one on July 20th. Thanks, Natural Man, for coming through. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> and the one before that, Revolution Records, I was out of town for. But um, the community has been really, like, this response has been really positive. I think people are excited about it. Um, so I'm excited to be a part of it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what what else is going to be happening with uh, Natural Man coming up? Do you have are there any plans for shows or other recordings or tours? Um, yes, we we are planning on having a release show at some point. Don't know when. Don't know where. But we are going to have one before. I don't know. 
when exactly, but hopefully Everyone's soon. Invited. Yeah, we haven't actually been in the same room together since we ended. Since we at well, I guess. We cleaned the van. Well, Dakota didn't make it. It's hard to get six people together, and it's really hard to make decisions about anything, really. So we have to figure that out. But we are going to have a release show. Um, We're going down to Oklahoma City for the latest incarnation of Everything is Not Okay. I believe after that, at the end of August, we're supposed to be playing a show with the band Period Bomb. I think at the East Wing. And that's all we have planned, other than writing new songs, maybe putting a keyboard in the band. We're Leslie a also in the just band? got a tenor. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So we Big played a show in Denver and we stayed at Max's house, not that Max, Dakota's friend. And as we were, like, getting into the van, he comes running out with a tenor saxophone case and is handing it to me. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And, and he's like, he li- I, I don't remember the story exactly because I was, there's so much, so many endorphins exploding in my brain. Because I opened the case and saw it was a Selmer, which is, could lead to being, like, the nicest saxophone that you can buy. And I was like, oh, you, you're making a mistake. You don't want to do this. But he was like, no, I, he, some, like, old lady whose husband was in a military band, which is a big deal. Like, to play in a military band, you have to be really good. So I was like, oh, shit, the saxophone's really nice. And he's like, no, she, she just said she didn't want to sell it. She wanted to give it to somebody. So I was like, all right. And I... I found out this week that it's a 1956 Mark VI tenor saxophone, which is the best professional horn that you can, you can buy basically. Uh And so I just need to get it like cleaned up. Um, and so you might be seeing me playing tenor. Oh yeah. That's, that's enough of a a selling point right there. Come see the nicest horn one could play. It's bigger. Yeah. It's bigger, bigger and better. Um, no, have you guys played uh, Everything's Not Okay before? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, last year. we played we play the breakfast year. show at the Red. Oh yeah, Club. that's right. Yeah, I loved that. I loved no, that was after the, breakfast. Now, who else? Like, what was the other band on that too? Because that was yeah. They always pick like kind of very fun, like kind of poppy bands for those shows. I feel like the early shows. Um, mm, I def- no, it was Liquids. No, on? no, it was Pink something. Oh, Pink Thing was on it. Yeah. Pink thing. That was fun. Thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, and um, yeah, you'll have a record release show soon. Got hopefully new horn. I'm sure we will. Uh, uh, yeah, is there anything else uh, people should know about that either of you guys are just kind of working on in general or? Uh, we we have to buy a van. Yeah. Okay. So someone, <laughs> someone, sell them a van, yeah, we need please. We need to get a van before we go to Oklahoma City. I guess we didn't really. I, I, mean, I just we can started thinking about that. Do like a that. caravan. If anyone can give us a ride or a van. Yeah. 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 That would be nice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, but yeah, and people can buy the record out now. Yeah, I think we you have can. Have some, right? We definitely have some, so you can get in touch with anybody in the band if you have to have it. <laughs> or you can order it online, I'm sure, through Lumpy. Yeah, uh, another through Lumpy, Lumpy for sure, store. and maybe through our band camp. I'm not positive about that, though. Only if you have to have it. You like, gotta have it. Yeah. Maybe just chill for a minute, wait for the release show, but yeah. if you really like it, you can yeah. acquire it. Yeah. And, well, and, and it's it streaming on the band camp, yeah. yeah. The Mutants for Nuclear Waste band camp page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the aforementioned mutants, I'm mm-hmm. guessing, yeah. out of Ian's mythology. Yes. Now, I'll have to have him on and dissect some of that at some point. I'm yeah, I would love to hear interested more. in knowing. <laughs> I'd love to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. What's my band about? Um, but yeah, uh, people should follow at Shuttlecock Mag on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and visit the shuttlecockmag.bigcartel.com for the uh, web store. And there are a bunch of shows coming up that we're hosting. We have um, Truth Cult at Revolution Records, uh, Death Cult at Seventh Heaven, lots of cults. Cool. Um, I think... 
Huh? Nothing. Nothing. Another another cult band I need to uh, know. No, it's just a it is a. There's just a line in Conan the Barbarian where somebody goes, "Oh, just another snake cult." <laughs> Sounds appropriate. That's the only thing I remember about that movie. Sorry. <laughs> or was it? Oh yeah, and there's also <laughs> a a benefit show that I'm co-hosting with Crystal coming up. That's going to be raising money to send people to see uh, the 30 Americans exhibit at the Nelson Atkins. So come out it's to a great that. Exhibition. It's it's yeah, it's really awesome. We should need to get as many kids out there to see it as we can. And yeah, just a whole bunch of other stuff. Look at the social media for all the gigs and everything. But yeah, thank you guys for being on the the podcast today. It was, it was thank fun. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.